Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Mr. Kirk Douglas in The Butcher's Wife, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Wilcox! I say there, Wilcox, old man. Reming Chester shotgun as I live, breathe, and batter my brains for burgeoning boasts about the battery of batteries, the Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. She's sounding off. Was it not you who defied me to find a camel that could go without water as long as an Autolite Stay Full battery? Defy you, I did, you dubious dunderhead. Please, no compliments. I concede your claim regarding ordinary one-hump camels, but what about a two-hump camel? Need I say more? Well, you probably mean he can go twice as long without refilling. But Autolite Stay Full batteries hold over three times as much liquid reserve above the plates as ordinary batteries. Need I say more? Zones. I shall have to find a dromedary with four humps. Even that won't do it, for Autolite Stay Full batteries need water only three times a year in normal car use. What's more, in recent tests, based on SAE life cycle standards, Autolite stay-full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without stay-full features. So get wise, get an Autolite stay-full battery, because you're always right with Autolite. And now, with The Butcher's Wife and the performance of Kirk Douglas, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. started the first day of the job. I was clerking the liquor department of this supermarket. I hadn't been in Los Angeles a week. My brother, when I'd left New York, had given me this letter to a friend of his, a guy who owned a string of these markets. The letter was about could he use me. I was a good fellow. He'd counted a favor, you know. And the guy had this opening, liquor clerk, and comes the following Monday. I'm at work. I spent the morning loading the refrigerators with beer, soda water, all that stuff. And sizing up the place. You know, back east, we don't have these supermarkets. There was a vegetable department run by a nice little dark guy. There was a delicatessen. That was run by an old geezer and his frau. There was a bakery department, a meat department, of course, the groceries. No clerks. You pushed a little cart around and helped yourself. To get out, you passed the cash register and the girl loaded your stuff and rang up the price. My uh, surveillance of the place had reached the girl who checked the groceries when the trouble started. She was looking at herself in a little mirror and putting on some lipstick. Her back was to me. I see her stop putting on the lipstick, but still looking at the mirror. I see her eyes in the mirror. And then she turns around very slowly and looks at me. Just looks at me. She must have been 50 feet away at the least, and with customers between us. But it was like we were all alone, the two of us, on a beach somewhere, an empty beach. I should have looked away. I should have winked and forgotten it. I should have gone on stacking beer and thinking about how to be a success. That's what I should have done. What I did do was I stood right there and locked eyes with her for I don't know how long. And all the time I was looking at her, I was sending her mental telegrams. You and me, baby. You and me. Hey. Hey, you. Hey. You and me, baby. Hey, what's the matter? Sleep on your feet? Uh, Oh, what'd you say? Uh, You the new guy, huh? Yeah, I I just started this morning. Uh, I'm Nick Arno. I work the vegetables. Oh, Harry Carr. Pleased to know you. Yeah. You got two bottles of cold beer? Oh, sure. Cold as a witch's heart. Only don't open here by the counter. You know, it's the law. Yeah, sure, sure. I have them out back with my lunch. Well? Oh, uh... Uh, 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 Nick. What? Uh, the, uh, the gal over there by the cash register. Huh? Mary? Is that her name? Mary? Yeah. What about her? Well, that's what I'm wondering. What about her? Oh. No soap. But... She's married. Oh, you kidding. You see that big guy over there with a the knife? The butcher? Yeah. Ask him if I'm kidding. Well, who's he? Her husband. Uh... Oh. See ya. I looked over at him. <laughs> He's a funny-looking guy, a real creep. 
He stood there stropping a tremendous big cleaver, whistling to himself. He had on, you know, one of those hard straw hats and a white apron. He had those rimless glasses with thick lenses so that his eyes looked like baseballs. When he saw I was looking at him, he nodded and went on whistling and stropping. It's a real creep. Later on, I watched him softening up some sort of steaks. He had a big steel mallet with points on it, and he was whacking away at this meat like a pile driver. I watched him grinding, slicing, quartering, sawing the bones off some of the cuts. And always those eyes like baseball. And that teeny little mouth lost in the big red face, whistling. And I looked over at her, and she was giving me the eye again. We closed at seven. The vegetable guys carted out the old stuff. Delicatessen man put away his pickles. I checked the register, counted my slips, made my entries. Krause the butcher was still there, packing and cleaning, putting stuff in that big refrigerator room back of the counter, but she'd left. I got into my street coat and walked out. Hello? She was standing, looking at the shoe display a couple of doors down from the market. I said hello. Don't you say hello wherever it is you come from? Sure. Hello. Taking the bus? Yeah. Which way do you go? Down to Wester. I'm going that way. I'll drive you. Uh, no, no, I, uh, I don't think you'd better. What's the matter? I, I wouldn't want to trouble you. No trouble. Well, uh... Come on. I'm parked right here. Yeah, but what about, uh... Mr. Krause. He'll be there an hour yet. He takes the bus. Oh. Come on. Well, I, uh... Come on. Don't yeah, be afraid. I'm not afraid You're of you. You're afraid I... of me. I... Come right. on. Get in. <laughs> so all day long I'm pushing liquor at them. Now they're pushing it at me. <laughs> oh, you're cute, Harry. I mean it. You're really cute. Ah, uh, so are you, baby. You really think so? Sure, baby. Harry, let's get out of here. Go someplace else. Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. I gotta work in the morning. Hey, silly, this is the morning. It is. Hey, hey, Mac, what's the time? Uh, 2.30. Harry, Harry, you really think I'm cute? Oh, sure, baby. Look, but it's late, real late. Don't worry, look, look, Sugar. Look, come on. I'll take you home. No, no. I'll take you home. Oh, I felt lousy the next morning. I'm not much of a drinker. But she looked fresh as a daisy, smiling and joking with the customers. I didn't look over there. I didn't want to. I didn't want to think about what she must have gone on between her and Kraus when she got in. He didn't look happy. I knew why. I kept waiting for him to turn those baseball eyes on me. But he never did. Just went on smashing, slicing, grinding, sawing, all that. When I came out that night, she was there. I tried to disregard her, Harry. but she... Yeah, she said she had something very serious to talk over. Well, yeah. the way she said it, I got in the car again. No, it's awful, Harry. Really, you yeah. don't know. Yeah, I guess it's You, you just wouldn't believe some yeah. of the things. Look, Mary, He's I... crazy jealous. Well, of you? <laughs> That's silly. Well, I guess it's... Jealous of me. Or should I say of you? Uh, me? Hmm. What's he know about me? Well, I got him this morning and there he was, sitting up like Grandma in his bathrobe. He says, where you been? I said, what's it to you, Auntie? <laughs> they call him Annie. It drives him crazy. Now look, Mary, So I... he said, don't think you can fool me. And then he started crying and saying a lot of things about Babylon and then sitting on the waters. Real crazy talk. Look, I, I better go, Mary. Oh, I don't... Harry, don't be silly. He doesn't know who you are, who it is. Yeah, but he could find out. Not unless I told him. Oh, look, you, you wouldn't do that. <laughs> 
Of course not, baby. As long as you're good to me. The next night, I stayed in the market. I was scared. I didn't want any more of that stuff. I did inventory, counted bottles, cleaned the refrigerator, changed the water in the soft drinks cooler. I kept busy. Across the market, Krauss was moving around, cleaning up. After a while, he took off his apron and his straw hat, and he came over. Uh, hello, Mr. Krauss. Uh, give me a bottle of beer. Sure thing. Uh, all right to drink it here? Sure. We're, we're closed, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, here. Here's an opener. Thanks. Uh, You're working late, huh? Well, you know how it is. Nothing to do evenings. No? Nah. I'm new out here. Takes time to make friends. Yeah. For me, maybe it would take time. But not for a good-looking young fellow like yourself. Oh, I don't know. You're a big, broad-shouldered guy. Yeah, sure, big. That's me. Uh, how's the beer? Uh, it's all right. Listen, do you know my wife? Uh, your wife? Yeah, you know her? She, uh... Oh, oh, isn't she the one who checks the groceries? Yeah. Oh, very nice-looking lady. You think so? Well, of course, I... Oh, don't get me wrong. I, I mean it very sincerely, a very nice, respectable-looking... Yeah, looking. sure. She... Listen, have you noticed anything funny going on there? Funny? Somebody's playing around with her. And I want to find out who. With her? You wouldn't think it now, would you? No, I should say not. I don't know who it is, but... Listen, haven't you noticed anything? I mean, uh, some guy who shoots the breeze with her or something like that? Well, no, uh, no, uh... Uh, then, uh, will you do me a favor? Sure. What? Keep your eyes open. Oh, I will, Mr. Krauss. I promise you. Uh, uh, I'll find the guy. I'll find out who he is if it takes a year. And when I do, I'll kill him. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Kirk Douglas in The Butcher's Wife. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. I say, Wilcox, you're keeping me in suspense. Ah, but not for long, Remingchester, old man. I'll tell you here and now, you just can't find anything. Man, beast, or battery to beat the liquid reserve of a genuine Autolite Stay Full battery. That's a powerful statement, we'll call. That's a powerful battery, Reming Jester. Needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Extraordinary. Well, I must be on my way. If I'm to find a more capacious camel, after all, life is short. Not the life of the Autolite Stay Full battery. With fiberglass retaining mats at every positive plate, Autolite stay-full batteries give 70% longer average life than batteries without the stay-full features. That's based on recent tests conducted according to SAE life cycle standards. See your Autolite dealer soon, friends, because you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage our star, Kirk Douglas, in The Butcher's Wife, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. See how it happens? You go along, minding your own business, trying to be a sweet guy and a whammy. Up pops the devil. The roof caves in and there you are. The executioner's honing the axe and whistling to himself. I tell you, I was nervous. My hands were sweating and my teeth were aching. And Well, if it hadn't been for needing the job bad, I'd have put on my coat and hightailed it out of there but fast. It was a situation. And Mary's looking over at me every now and then, giving me the big eyes. Yeah, the heck with you, baby. Get yourself another boy. And Krauss is looking over, raising his eyebrows. Do I know who it is yet? And I'm making a long face and shaking my head. Then Nick, the vegetable man, comes over. I see you didn't understand what I told you the other day. Well, 
What's that, Nick? About Mary. I told you she was a married woman. Oh, what are you talking about? I see you, the both of you, coming out of a bar together morning. You're nuts, Nick. Listen, Don't I never... pull the hard face with me, Harry. What? I L- ought to tip Krause off to what's going on. Nick. Nick, be a good guy, will you? Be a good guy, will you? I'm telling you, you better be a good guy. And leave the butcher's wife alone if you know what's good for you. Look, I will, Nick, I will. I swear it. It was a mistake, that's all. Yeah. Oh, be a good guy, Nick. Forget about it. All right. This once, okay. But do it again and you'll get what's coming to you. Sure, Nick. And I'm not just talking. Sure. Harry. What? Blow, will you? Blow. Harry, I wish you wouldn't treat me this Look, way. Blow, get away. Look at me, Harry. Don't you know your husband's watching uh, you? He's got his glasses off. He couldn't see Hollywood Bowl. You better be nice to me, Harry. Please, Mary. Please go back to your cash register. I want to see you tonight. No. Oh, yes. Look, understand me, Mary. You're poisoned. Now get away. You'll see me, Look, Harry, or go- you'll see Kraus. All right. Where? I'll be quiet. Around the corner. Around the corner. Don't be late. Oh, Harry. Stop being silly. Come on, get in. Look, please, can't you understand? I don't want any trouble. What are you so afraid of? Trouble. Oh, come on, baby. Let's go and have some fun. Look, please, I... What's the matter? Oh. Hello, Nick. I warn you. Listen, you've got it wrong, Nick. Oh, no. What is all this? You shut up. Don't you talk to me like that. I talk to you like I please, cheat. Harry! Hit him, Harry! I didn't hit him. He was looking down his nose at me, and he was a nice, wide-open target, but I didn't hit him. Because all of a sudden, I knew what I had to do, and I knew I had to do it fast. Harry! Hey, where are you going, baby? I didn't turn. Nick was still back to beside the car. I went into the market. Mr. Kraus? Mr. Kraus? Yeah? I, uh, uh, I... What? I found out. What? I can't hear you. I said I found out. I found out who it is. Who? Nick. The vegetable man. Yeah. (laughs) The vegetable man. I knew yesterday, but I didn't want to get him in trouble. I told him to lay off, but he said nuts. He said if I opened my mouth, he'd tell you it was me, that I was the A one. vegetable man. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Cross. I never did like him. I never did like him. Well, uh, good night. Good night. I took a bottle of brandy home with me. No dinner. I just lay there on the bed about three hours, talking to myself. Finally, the heck with the job. I got up, started the pack. I was broke, but I didn't care. I'd have to skip out of my rent, but it didn't matter. I didn't care. I wanted out from Kraus, from Mary, from Nick, and... Suddenly, I I figured that even if Nick was a snooping little rat with his holier-than-thou, I I ought to clear him. So I wrote a note to Kraus. I said, uh... I did it, Kraus. Don't blame anybody else. I took the note in my bag and the key to the market, and I tiptoed out of the rooming house. I caught a bus and went to the market. The boulevard was deserted. I looked into the glass door. In the back of the place up high, there was a red neon beer sign that blinked on and off, on and off. I unlocked the door, went in, and locked the door behind me. Place was kind of eerie in the dark. What with that red light blinking on and off, and one minute the place was pitch black, and the next it was a thousand little red lights bouncing off the canned stuff in the groceries part. I went to the butcher counter first. I laid the note on the scale where he'd be sure to see it. Then I crossed over past the vegetables and the bakery, past the delicatessen to the liquor department. It was dark, and I kept bumping into things and. I thought, well, why am I acting like a criminal? So I turned on the light. The whole place was suddenly so dazzling it hurt my eyes. I looked at the cash register. I was just thinking, well, maybe I'll take a couple of bucks. When it happened, I hadn't touched it. 
Well, there were other switches in the place, and I didn't know where. After the brightness, the place seemed twice as dark. The red sign blinked on and off, on and off. Then I saw Kraus. He was standing behind the meat counter at the scale, and he picked up a note, my note. I did it, Kraus, and, and he read it. I couldn't see his eyes, just the glasses. And every time the light blinked, they shone red, bright red, like some sort of terrible toy. And they began to move. And it was like a movie that you see one frame at a time. Each time the light blinked out, he wasn't where he'd been before, but closer. Closer. Kraus? Mr. Kraus? Mr. Kraus? His red glasses kept coming at me. I edged over toward the vegetables, and he moved too. I moved the other way toward the groceries. There was a railing. I climbed over it. I was in one of the long, narrow aisles of cans and bottles. The stuff was piled head high. I waited, hoping maybe he didn't see me. But he did. I hid behind a stack of canned dog food. He sounded 30 or 40 feet away. I waited. I looked around the corner. He was looking down another aisle. I ducked my head back. Couldn't understand that sound. I looked again. The aisle was empty, but in the center where Krauss had stood were his shoes. He'd taken them off. Very quietly, I bent and took mine off. And I began to tiptoe away from where I'd seen him. And then I rounded the corner... There he was, not two feet away with his back to me. And I lost my balance. I put my hand out to steady me. A whole stack of cans went over. I ran. I kept running, and there I was. I was at the end of an aisle, and there was the wall, the back wall. And I turned, and he was coming, coming straight at me. My hand put something cold, a bottle. I grabbed it. It was ammonia. Krauss, get back. Get back, Krauss, or I'll blind you. Krauss, I warn you. I swear I will... <clears throat> He stood there like a crazy giant, like Cyclops tearing at his eyes, the ammonia running down his face. I didn't wait. I ran past him, bumping him aside, ran and ran and cut around the cash register, past delicatessen in the bakery to the door. It was locked. The key, well, I'd left it in the lock. It was gone. I tried to break the... Glass with my fist, but it was like steel. Well, I couldn't kick it. I'd left my shoes behind. And Krauss kept coming, feeling his way along, moaning. In the blinking light, I could see he still had the knife in his hand. I slid behind the counter of the meat department. Oh, under my feet, the sawdust. I bent, scooped up a handful. His face was awful, twisted and gleaming. His glasses were gone, and his eyes were screwed tight shut in pain. He stopped ten feet away, swaying. Then he opened his eyes, opened them as wide as he could and moved his head from side to side, trying nearsightedly to see me. Then his head stopped moving, and holding it sideways, using one eye to see me, he came on, the knife held way back. I waited. And I let fly with the sawdust and jumped to one side, my back up against the block, and he twisted and skidded in the sawdust and he fell. He was very still for a moment. I waited. He rose to his knees. In the blinking light, I saw the knife. He'd fallen on it. It stuck out of the middle of his chest. Krauss! Then, very slowly, he got to his feet, one hand over the place where the knife was, and started toward me again. There was a rack over the chopping block. He reached up and got a cleaver. I backed up... Behind me, I felt a large, cold handle. The door to the meat storage room, I heaved it open. My inside, it was cold. Bitter cold. And dark. In the center of the door was one small, thick pane of glass. It, it was clouded. I wiped it clear with my hand and looked out. Krauss stood there. His face an inch from mine, looking in. And then his eyes rolled back and his face went slack and he fell out of sight. He 
he was dead. I was sure of it. I, I felt around in the dark for the knob, but I couldn't find it. I felt the door from top to bottom. There were bars and bolts and something that felt like a handle. I yanked and tugged, but, but it wouldn't move. There, there was a knife on a slab there, a butcher knife. I felt around the door for a crack, slipped the knife in, and, and twisted. <laughs> Broke off. Another door, I thought. Maybe there's... Oh, please. Another door out of this place. I began to search for it in the dark, feeling along the icy, damp walls. I walked into something cool that moved when I touched it. Oh, the side of beef. But no door. I moved farther. Another icy, cool thing. And I moved on and came up against another... As cold as the rest, but... And I'm crazy... I know it. I, I'm crazy. This one, this one feels as though it's wearing silk stockings. <laughs> <laughs> So here I am. It's awfully cold. Cold as a witch's heart. Cold as a tomb. This thing I have in my hand, this knife handle. I wish it had a blade. I know what I do, I know, but it hasn't. Anyway, well, I'm innocent of anything. They'll believe me. They will. There's a letter outside on the scale. It says, I did it, Krauss. Don't blame anybody else. And there's my suitcase. Well, that'll prove I meant to go away and not cause anybody a hard time. And there's... Oh, oh, time goes slow. And while I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, I'll tell myself the whole story again and again. It, it, it'll give me something to do, you know, something to think about. You see, it, it started the first day of the job. I was clerking the liquor department of the supermarket. I hadn't been in Los Angeles a week. My brother, when I left New York, had given me this letter to a friend of his. You know, a guy who owned a string of these supermarkets. The letter was about, could he use me? I was a good fellow. He counted a favor, you know. The guy had this opening, a liquor clerk. It was the first day, and I'd come to Los Angeles. I could give you a short time. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Kirk Douglas. Remingchester. I say, you gave me a start. No, I didn't, Remingchester, old man. It must have been your new Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Just the thing for starting right. And remember, it's just one of more than 400 products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 plants, coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, coils, distributors, starting motors, and Autolite bullseye sealed beam headlights. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next Thursday for Suspense, Marlena Dietrich will be our star. The play is called Murder Strikes Three Times, and it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Butcher's Wife is an original play for radio by James Pole. Kirk Douglas whose thrilling performance in Champion has placed him among the Academy Award contenders, will soon be seen in Young Man with a Horn. You can buy Autolite Safeful batteries, Autolite regular or resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.